take these gloves off as I get into the finer <coughs> stitching. <coughs> it's not necessary. And it gives my hands better sensitivity to feel what I'm doing. Okay, so this is a number nine stitching modeling rasp. It's a nice, delicate little rasp, and I'm using a line Nielsen handle just to give me a little additional length. So I'm going to use this number nine to go into these areas where I'm doing the transitions, not leave too deep. In find that heel just a little bit more and then we'll call the final fit good. some relief areas on this fixture so that I can go in and see where I'm leaving myself. And that's looking really good. So and be really careful if you don't as as wonderful and hard and long lasting as these rasps are that you don't knock them into the steel clamp but you can lose teeth in a hurry. Luckily I haven't done that yet. <laughs> These rasps are so fast and 
so controlled, but it's wonderful. It's one of my favorite processes in the whole building. That and voicing nets. And to go in and make shaper jigs or have CNC uh, tool paths done so that you can get this done a lot faster locks you into the necessity to have only a couple of neck profiles that people either have to have work for them or they can't buy your guitar. For me, not only is it a joy to do it, but I can make a custom neck for every every individual if that's what they need. And it really doesn't cost much more, doesn't take much more time. Thank you, Noel. If you've seen the, the video that Noel has on his website, you see how much soul is put into these tools. And that's another thing is it just makes me feel really wonderful to know that as much care was put into the tools that I'm using as I'm putting into the guitars I'm building. Now it's a little more delicate as I fine tune too much time there because I'm going to come back after the fingerboard's on and trim that out anyway. Okay, so we basically got a nice roughed out shape started with a number five half round, went on to a number six modelers, which you could live without, but it's it's nice for the heel area. Then to a number eight cabinet makers, to a number nine modelers, and then a number eleven cabinet makers. So there's your basic shape. I don't want to refine it too much until I get that fingerboard on now. There's your French heel roughed out. Thanks for watching. And now we'll move on to the... Show you one more time the mahogany one that I've already rough carved. And then now I've installed the truss rod and I set the alignment on the body this way and the angle off of the body. I'll show you the bottom. This is the guitar that this will go on. So that's got a pretty nice fit. We'll do a little bit of fine tuning at the end. but. It's ready to be pressed in. Fits nicely. Check out that bees wing mahogany. Beautiful, isn't it? I 
and it's got a Brazilian rosewood fingerboard. So now it's nicely fit. We've glued the fingerboard on. So we'll go on to a final fit now. Now this jig actually has a little step in it here for the fingerboard so that I can slide it up until it just hits. We don't want to warp it or anything. One in there. And it's really nice to be able to just clamp onto the fingerboard. It's much easier than when you're rough carving. So now I'm going to go back to the number eight. I actually have an Iwasaki. I've I used regular rasps for years along here, but it'll tear into the plastic a little bit. So I found these Iwasaki floats. I use a number of different floats in the guitar making process, even for setting in braces into the side assembly and so on. Um, I've been using some Ryan Nielsen, but uh, Noel tells me he's going to utilize an old milling machine he has around and start making floats, so I'm real excited about that. Anyway, this is a, an Iwasaki, so it's not a, I believe it's a machine made float, but it works really nicely for, it moves wood really fast, but leaves a nice finish. So that's how I trimmed it down. And that leaves a, a flat area that then I have to transition. So I'll go back to number eight. This has a little bit of an a, a extra thin or narrow neck. It's for a woman performer. She's got small hands and she's rather petite. So she's having me do a 1 and 5 8 inch nut instead of the 1 and 3 quarters that I would normally do. Very easily done. You've got a nice set of rasps like this and you're not starting from scratch with a, a, a pre-programmed or jigs that require you to uh, work within certain parameters and this way um, it's real easy to just make a fingerboard that becomes my template uh, for the carve. So.